Good day everyone and welcome to the video, this video where I'm going to be running through how to do a bracing layout on a structure. Now it's part of the Structural Design 424 course and a building's been provided that we need to generate a bracing layout for. And in practice, coming up with systems for lateral stability are places where people can often make mistakes and these can be quite large mistakes so they actually can be quite dangerous most many steel mistakes if you make small errors here and there it's probably okay um, but in in these sorts of areas you can actually have an unstable structure so we're gonna have a look now uh, for the structure shown below draw a bracing layout from the wind blowing from north to south draw a bracing layout from the wind blowing from east to from west to east and then on our layouts we have to indicate which members are in tension and then some guidelines vertical bracing must be played on the, placed on the outside of each level wherever possible and that's sort of normal you want to keep your bracing far away from people and and you know, so to allow as much thoroughfare as possible and then use the minimum number of cross, cross bracing elements possible and then use tension only cross bracing for the vertical and horizontal bracing and so here is our structure um, and I've gone, got this layout now and I've already added those red arrows showing the wind blowing from north to south and it doesn't really matter what magnitude they are. All we need to make sure is every single one of those arrows can reach the foundation. So we need to then decide on a layout to provide stability to the structure. And I'm first going to then uh, go through it bit by bit and then uh, yeah, fill in all the elevations. So let's start have a look. So here is level one. Uh, we're going to have a look at level one. And also, sorry, just make sure you understand level one, level two, level three. Kind of try to get a picture of what the structure looks like. You've got a continuous floor at level one and then two separate parts of the building level two and then two little tiny structures on top and we now need to make sure that we brace the structure all the way down to the ground. Now for this structure here let's start at right at the base. Let's assume that we're going to put a brace there and there. Now this is one of many positions. I could have put it um, anyway. I could have, if I wanted to, I could have put one there and one there. There's no reason why not. Um, or on the bottom there and there. And one or the other. But the, the reason I've chosen this middle bay is it makes it a lot easier to link them all together. So I have a consistent braced bay all the way from top to bottom. And uh, now I've got almost a stiff beam through the middle of the structure linked to vertical bracing, vertical bracing each side that will then take it down to the floor. And this will then carry all these loads. So all of those forces can be carried onto this almost like a beam spanning from side to side. In effect, we have a pin and a roller, a pin and a roller um, that where the pin and the roller comes from the vertical bracing which we'll sketch soon. Now let's have a look at the next level. Here we've got various different options. Probably the simplest will be if I want to keep the bracing on the outside I can put a brace, a vertical brace there and there and now that force and that force have a load path because it'll go down and down and then on it'll be carried at the next floor through these positions. Now I don't have a load for, I mean, a load path for this middle one. So if I add something like that, now I do. I've created a, a stiff floor, and then this will be spread out to the vertical braces each side. And I'm going to first finish the, the top floor and then come back to the right hand side. Once again, I need to take the load down. So I'm going to put a vertical brace there, vertical brace there, and then that load will then can come down there and then also join in with this this floor here and uh, oh just a, a comment in most buildings in all honesty floors provide bracing if you have a concrete floor or a fuss trap floor which is a steel plate that provides actual stability whereas now um, we're just assuming that the floor doesn't this is a grating floor not fixed to anything and it's providing no uh, sort of horizontal load transfer but in reality most floors do um, but here we're, we're ignoring that now let's come back so level two I need to carry those loads all the way down so I'm going to put a braced bay there 
a brace bay there that'll carry that load down to the floor below and then either it'll go all the way to the ground on the right hand side or then into this braced bay um, braced floor system so now that load and that load are cared for this one this one we've already done last time take it all the way down there all the way down there in practice i would probably put cross bracing there just to link the two together here we have a uh, suitable way of doing this um, so sorry to to say that again here I would I don't need this floor bracing but in practice it would make sense to put it in just to link everything together because the loads aren't applied at nodes actually applied along length so it would keep it a little bit more stable but in theory we don't need the the dotted bracing there what I'm gonna do now is just go through and sketch all of those vertical bracings on the elevations and then once we've got that we'll start marking up which ones are in tension So here you can see I've, I've shown where all the vertical braces go. So the, this diagram in the middle here exactly matches what's shown on the bottom. It just gives you the, the elevation view on it. Now what I want to do is uh, go ahead and indicate which of these members are in tension. So uh, actually let me just do that in a different color. I'm going to pick a color and then just indicate which ones of these will go into tension. Now if the load is blowing from the side then what will happen is all the diagonals that carry the load in that direction go into tension, the rest others go into compression and they carry the load. So this purple, all these purple members will carry load and then the blue ones will carry nothing. And then the same thing on the um, the the floor plans now one thing that is going to happen here is I have this one in the middle I'm actually not sure it depends on the overall load system which um, which side has more load so let's just say this is um, a preliminary layout I could say you know either one of those I'm not 100% sure definitely on the left hand side those intention definitely on the right those but it depends on is there more load on the left or more load on the right um, in this case and so it would depend then which of those will go into to tension um, like that there we go the second floor and then all the rest are um, go into compression or carry no load as well so that then takes us through that uh, analysis showing all the different uh, sections which have well have now been stabilized and which members are into tension now let's have a look at the second part of the question for the wind blowing from west to east and so here we have then the loads shown and now we need to make sure that these loads can be carried to the ground once again I'm going to start going through the the layout but here I've got a bit of more of a problem for instance let's say I decide to put a brace vertical bracing there vertical bracing there and then some floor bracing this load this load this load this load are all cared for and they all have paths to get there but if we have loading on the other side of the structure which there would be wooden section this these two middle loads have a path they will put that into tension and that into tension so those loads are cared for but I don't currently have a system to carry that one there and the bottom one so I need something extra now but let's first sort out the left hand side of the building and then we'll sort out the right hand side it'll make most sense if I carry this bracing all the way up so uh, let me go ahead and do that I'm going to carry it all the way up there and there and then now there's my next floor now all these loads are carried through this bracing and then vertically downwards all the way to down and down and uh, once again I've got loads here that I'll need to worry about and now when I get to the top what thing I have here is brace brace this load is between grid lines B and C so in all reality I mean all honesty probably would have been better if I had put the brace bay below on grid line B and C if I'd kept this and if I shifted 
that across by one bay and that across by one bay. It'd probably be a neater layout because everything would be between grid line B and C. So on site, what they would do is they would build grid lines B to C first and then extend out from there. So you've got a, a stable braced bay to build up against. But uh, I haven't done that. So what I can do now is that load ultimately from there and there will come down. It'll be applied at that position, put that one into compression, and so it's actually okay, even though they're on different, um, between different bays, it's still stable. There still is a statically determinate structure that I can analyze to get the, the results. So now that carries all of those loads, this load and this load. But now what about the loads on the right hand side of the building? And once again, there, there are many systems uh, possible. Let me start also just for a change, I'm going to start from the top down. So let's say, uh, all right, I'm going to start with those two loads up there. I want to now take that load to the ground. So here we go, I'm going to put brace bay. In reality, I'd probably put a brace there, but it's not carrying load right now. And then this would now apply a load there, there. Okay, so I'm going to just brace those ones out. I now need a vertical brace, vertical brace. Okay, that actually works out because I can take it all the way to the ground there and all the way to the ground there. And so the vertical bracing then will well the will carry that down to the floor below. It'll then spread out and carry those four loads as well. And then this one and this one are carried by the side vertical bracing. I'm going to just sketch the vertical bracing on the elevations now so you can see um, where it goes and hopefully we'll be able to picture it a bit better. So here you can see the vertical bracing added to the elevations on grid lines one, two, three, and four. And yeah, you can just compare that to the layouts below levels one, uh, plan view on levels one, two, and three. And as you'll see here, once again, the uh, between grid lines one and two, we've sort of stepped the bracing um, between grid lines C and D and then B and C. Normally it'd be better to have in one position, but here we've stepped them for whatever reason. You could also possibly have it that the, the architect wants a door there, and so you couldn't put bracing in on the side. So there are various reasons why that sort of thing would happen. But now let's have a look at which members will go into tension when the load is applied. So now we've got load being applied in that direction. And so we will then have all the members that elongate. So as the structure leans over, that those diagonals will elongate. And so we'll go into tension. So I just want to draw that again so you can see it. So those ones there will elongate and uh, go into tension. And now let's just draw that out. And even on the last diagram, I only showed the cross bracing, which members were in tension, but I'm also gonna add some of the, the other ones here. So here you've got that going into tension and you'd actually find that if you analyze these, you'd end up with tension paths going all the way to the ground on some of them as it tries to uh, rotate and turn over. Just to get static equilibrium, you end up with columns going into tension. Uh, just adding this on this diagram just to illustrate. So you've got something like that developing and then the other ones are in, in compression. And now on the, the plan view, uh, coming back now to our layouts here, that one would be tension, tension, and then if you consider this as a beam, so here is the beam, and then uh, point loads on. If you see this section there as a beam, you end up with a shear force diagram that looks something like that. And where there is zero shear force, there will be zero tension force in the bracing. So these ones in the middle actually are zero force members. In reality, you'll never have a situation where it's perfectly symmetric and um, you know, uniformly loaded, but your model might tell you that. And sometimes you can have, have um, problems with finite element analyses because it gets confused because now you've got members that both have zero stiffness because they think maybe they're both in compression or both in tension. But uh, 
you can have the situation where both in the middle go into tension and uh, or, or compression and they well effectively are zero force members and so now we're just going to fill in the rest of these once again these are basically zero force members um, carrying the load all the way through the structure so um, coming back so there's our overall structure and then how we've carried the loads all the way from top to bottom and then carried it through the structure but then hopefully that's given you a good overview of how to carry out a rundown uh, a load rundown all the way through your structure and then just make sure the sections fit together and then you double check that your plans views match your ele um, elevations thank you